Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm painting again, you guys. Merry, merry tags. It's a plum purdy design. Number 687. Anywho, I had this, and evidently, well, Happy New Year, by the way. It is the 1st of January 2020, and um, I'm just, I, I did all this, and then this guy's coming. My little, the little troll. Well, I keep calling him a troll. It's not a troll. It is, um, sorry, I just got a message. Anywho, what is he? Anyway, I'll think of it. So I've already base coated everything. I'm going to do this little reindeer because I think he, oh, well, I just moved him. I think he's got some, uh, I wanted to show you these antlers, the way I'm going to do the antlers. So it says, paint the antlers with burnt umber. And I did just get a brand new burnt umber, and it's called traditional burnt umber. I don't know what happened to burnt umber, why they had to have it traditional and not traditional, but <laughs> um, I'm going to use that. And I shook it pretty good, but it's looking a little bit watery. I think I'm going to use the rigger for this, just because it's it has long bristle bristles. I'll show you. Because I could absolutely use this. This is a zero liner, but the rigger, there's so many options with when it comes to brushes. So you just have to find the ones that work for you. And all I'm doing is making branches. So I want something that can be now a rigger. This is the faux squirrel rigger. I just put it in water. And it it's got it's kind of thick this way so it's going to hold enough water but it comes to a point that I'll be able to come up and have a nice branch anyway we'll see so this is the one I'm choosing to use and then I did trace on lines now if you get a pattern packet the the artist always adds includes their own line drawings so here's what the branches look like on the reindeer right and then in the picture here's what they look like and she's got snow on them and stuff so it's just thick thin thick thin so it, it doesn't have to be exactly what she drew necessarily so I just put one line to, as a guideline very lightly and then I'll use the picture as I go as well to kind of indicate where I want to go and then when you um, load the brush I like to load a liner. I just I always pull from the puddle. I don't just go right here and go right to the piece. I load the brush. So I'm just putting, turning it a little bit. And then what happens with this brush is I can be up on the tip and kind of wiggle and turn. But then if I push down, I don't even know if I'm in the shot but like you can get and then because it goes thinner and thicker like you'll have thicker little part I just like the way that looks this seems like that had too much water uh, but the surface this is a, a paper palette and it's like a slick surface anyway so it's not the true um, it's not realistic when you look at it but anyway so I'm gonna do my branches with this brush for right now and I did notice that it just split but that's okay and I'm just gonna start at the base of his head so there's two main antlers right they're not branches they're antlers so I'm gonna kind of fill in here just to get it attached to his head then I'm just going to put my brush down and kind of, because they kind of look like branches, but they're antlers. And then he has, this one is, it go, it stops here actually, there's one here, but this one is what's going to hold this um, ornament. There's a little loop. And I missed the line, but that's okay.
just pull some of that I, it was a little bit more paint that I had and then there's another one that goes off this way again I'm just going to fill in they kind of both take off from the center of his head and then it So that's pretty easy when I do it like that, right? And it doesn't look um, opaque. So maybe we'll go back and do it again. But doing it this way kind of gives it a... Uh, what am I trying... What is the word? Like a... Maybe dimensional. Maybe it makes it look a little rounder. Rounder. I don't know and this is where that little purple ball is going to hang from and there's going to be snow oh there's a little one here and a little one here so I'll just let those dry but that's what I wanted to show you because it's just fun when you get to work with the brush in a way like that. And then now I'm just going to go into floating. So I wanted to show you that. So let's see what other techniques. These are painted a little differently. Like so her Santa, she didn't do the beard the way that we did the beard on, the, um, on these guys. So she just painted it in solid. So there's a, a lot of different ways to, uh, let's see. This one is pretty basic. I changed the color of her shirt because I didn't like that it was so close to the color of the gingerbread, so I gave her a light buttermilk. I have to do a second coat on the icing. And the snowman, really nothing new there either. So these, this little pattern I would recommend. It's a Merry Merry Tags. Floating is the, the most... Um, the hardest part that you're going to find because the base coating is real basic like you have a little bit of holly holly leaves and berries the little bird look how cute so I can put the little birds perch I'm sorry his branch um, I don't even know if it's in burnt umber but I'm assuming it is and if it's not it is now so I'm loading my brush again and I'm just I'm going to glance at the because I just want to see how so this comes, look, this is what I'm looking at. Um, where is it? Over here. Oops. Jeez. So it comes from here and kind of goes down, and then it goes across. But it doesn't have to be exact because it's not realistic, guys. And, you know, so I'm just going to go down and wiggle it, and then this one can come something like that. And then I'll put little feet on him, you know. He has a tail that I'm going to paint. It connects right here. I'm going to paint three little tail feathers. And then there's also going to be, um, what are they called? Uh, the fur needles, the pine needles. So that's cute. What other thing has branches? Nothing else has branches. She has some holly on her head. All right, while we're doing that, let's do, I'll do her little, um, I don't know if it's, uh, I'll be right back because I don't want to take a lot of time. All right, so I'm going to do this little gingy. I'm just going to float it with my, let's see, this is a 3 8 inch angle brush. I'm going to use Burnt Sienna, my favorite brown. It's like a reddish brown. I corner load it, and then I work the paint into the bristles on my palette paper to get a graduation of color. And then I'm just using, I'm gonna, when you put this down, put all the bristles on the surface because the, there's water in the brush as well. And I'll show you that. If you look at this, you can kind of see the water line right here and that'll dry. I love to float. Um, you can also use a mop brush. And the, the thing with the mop is I can pull the color up until the water ends. Then once the co color 
hits the end of the water, it's going to stop there and leave a line. So, you, you know, it's a little bit of a process to get used to what you want. And I usually use a bigger brush to float, but I'm going to, this will help me control how much color I put down because I'm very heavy handed. I like a lot of color. I like my floats dark. So I, I think um, that's why I've been getting a lot of feedback from you guys. You're appreciating these videos and I'm very happy to share. Um, but I do have to say, the more you paint, the better you'll get. It just takes practice. And um, I've painted, I painted for years. Um, and a lot, I painted a lot for years. So, um, you know, if you, if you can, and this is what I saw actually something on Facebook about doing, you know, with the new year and everything. People always say, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. But you have time to scroll through Facebook. You have time to, you know, to do social. Like, you have time. If you want to make the time, you can make the time. You know, just like with anything that's worth it. Um, I have the time because I don't work. And I know it is like a lot of people work full time. And they have children. And they have all these things. But this is part of your... Um, your spirit, your spiritual growth. You have to take time to um, make yourself feel good or else something's, something's going to happen. <laughs> you know, like you have to make sure that your spirit is happy. And if this is, and this is something that has, that's why this is called My Serenity Crafts, this channel. Because it definitely makes my spirit happy to do this. Um... All right, so that's just all I'm going to do there, and then she gets cheeks. I have the red. I just want to do this real quick because I'm going to put the uh, icing on. And when you do the cheeks, see that's way too much color. I have to pull myself back because um, you don't, you know, I have you have to be subtle sometimes. Um, but her cheek is just going to be. I'm going to put the paint down here and pull it around her little sleeve here and tuck it that might be too much I don't know I, I might not have needed it all the way down to her chin yeah I don't really like that I don't it's kinda like mm, it should be up more I don't like it down here so you take it just a q-tip and I actually use a spit so but you could just dip it in your water bucket and get it a little bit wet and then you can take it off as long as it's um, still wet the paint the float so let's see sometimes I struggle too guys my brush is splitting a little which I'm not thrilled about I'm gonna put this down and pull it up and then I pivot my brush to kinda tuck it up against the side then I'm gonna move the paint a little bit because I have water there I don't like that either. So I'm going to take it off. And I'll get it. You have to be patient. It's a cookie. It's not, you know, I also have to realize, you know, it's not the Mona Lisa. It's a cookie. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try it again. And just load my brush. Gently something isn't working with this brush maybe I'm gonna to switch to my bigger brush this is a 5 8 inch angle and it's so old but I ugh, I love this brush so much it's an American painter but it has long bristles and it holds a lot of water but you have to all right this is good and then I'm going to tuck it and then oops just gently as long as there's water on the surface see it still went up too high I like that though I'll keep that color got on the water though so there's a water line here and color there was too, like I ha probably had too much water on my brush 
so the water just I mean the color floated there so I do see that I'm not thrilled I'm gonna just take my q-tip and try to but see then you dig a hole all right that looks okay I'll stick with it and I'm just gonna go I have so much I'm gonna blot and let's just try to put this right here but if you don't put all the bristles on the surface you won't have the the water down there that you need and this is not working there you go I walked it out much further I like that definitely and it's a cookie so I need to relax but yeah I just struggled with that but I wanted you to see the process of me fixing it and then right here I'm gonna something's going on right here that's bothering me and of course Kiwi hears me so she's squawking a bit in the background she's a green cheek conure that looks better all right but this is what I was gonna get to with I'm gonna use the rigor again that we just used for the antlers and light buttermilk and when you do line work you want the paint to be like ink so you need to have a little water in your brush and just make a little puddle right next to the paint puddle that's this is just paint this is paint and water and I'm just pulling the paint through it because we're gonna put little um, icing lines like a little icing line on her hands and her head and I'm just gonna let the brush do the work and go across here I could trace it you could trace it on if you feel like it but it's icing so you can just let the brush do the work and it came out pretty decent a little bumpy there but that's okay um, and this is also I love that this makes each piece individually yours it's not it can't be anyone else's no one else's icing is gonna look like this only mine so that's why even though we're painting Renee's work she was she designed this piece and told us what colors to put and everything it's it's still ours it's it's my own piece you know and you can add your own things to it and stuff the book now she's getting cute I'm just gonna put a little bit more light buttermilk on this icing hi Jen I hope my head is not in the shot I'm trying to let my bangs grow out again and it's so hard but then I'll get them cut again. It's just what I do. All right. I don't know. I could keep going, but basically it's just going to be more floating. So you don't have to watch anymore. This is just, um, really, I just wanted to show you the, um, just the, how you can let the brush do the work. You don't have to paint it in like it's the coloring book. You can just kind of let the brush like and I've had two cups of coffee and that helps <laughs> when you're doing but because it's a branch and there's going to be snow on it like it doesn't have to be you can come out of the lines a little you know like you can let it be a little more um, painterly and um, that's just the only thing I hadn't really shared um, line work is I'm just jiggling my hand a little and kind of but I just wanted to get it to be a little more solid and there's I've done pattern packets where you um, actually shade and highlight the branches and man it looks so cool more realistic painting I don't tend to do that kind of painting I because I am a color I am my press personal preference of what I like is more whimsical I'm not a realism painter this nose is a little bit um, transparent but I think it'll be fine because that also with it with a carrot it'll give it a more rounded feel and then with the Santa I, I might just stipple his 
his see look one here she does have it stippled just the top of it and it's shaded on the bottom but that's basically it you guys um I will be back with um I want to do a faux finish Tracy Moreau has a video on Facebook where she does it's just a flat surface but she makes it look like barn wood she does a faux finish effect and then I want to put some um slogans like live and let live one day at a time stuff like that I want to put them on there and put them around the house um, so I think I'm going to film that although she does a wonderful tutorial for that um, but that's it I'm just going to continue painting and those of you who want to watch me float watch me float but for now um, that's it and I'll be back with something else but I'm going to keep floating so here we go Let's do, I'm going to do her um, apron. Well, I think because I changed, oh, the apron, okay. Avocado. I'll be right back. All right, there's other things going on in the house, but I finished up this little gingy. I just wanted to show you on her um, little apron. Let me make sure I'm in the shot. Um, we're going to make stripes. These stripes right here are done with a wash. See the green stripes? They're like a wash of avocado, and I'm going to use, um, let's see, this number... This is a number four. I think this will be good. Flat brush. And I'm going to take this avocado and the water and I'm going to pull a puddle. But I really want it wet. So I'm going to put mostly water and a little bit of paint. One more. All right. And then I rinse my brush. Blot. Then I'm going to load it with that wet puddle. And I'm just going to eyeball it. So basically, let's come in a little bit. I don't want to go out of the shot. But if I eyeball it, I just, that means I'm going to take my brush, I load it with that wet paint, and then I'm just going to come here and set my brush down like right approximately like right there. Do you think that's, yeah, I think that's dark enough. Even when it dries, it should dry. And then I'm just going to evenly space it over. It's a little puddly right there. But with washes, you have to be careful because um, I'm just not going to overload my brush. Because you can't really touch it again or it'll pick up what you just did. So there you go. I don't know if it'll be dark enough, but I think it is. And it's a little bit wetter at the bottom, but that kind of looks like shading. Um, the other thing I was going to show you is this, uh, the bow on the spoon. There's a bow. And again, I'm just going to use the rigger, and I'm going to let the brush do the work. So I'm going into water, then I'm going to make a puddle of red with a little bit, not as wet as that puddle was, but... Um, so that it moves and I'm just I'm not I didn't trace it on there I'm just gonna let the brush do the work I really don't want to touch what I just did but just gently make a little what would you call that a loop and then just make another loop and because I can't move my hand so I painted it in a little and then for the um, ends of the ribbon. I'm just going to let the brush do the work again. And I hope I'm using the right color because I didn't really. And then she has like a dot in the middle. I'm just going to use the end of the brush and put it in the puddle and put it right in the middle and get that off of there. So I just wanted to do that while that was drying because we have to wait for that to dry. Let me see what it says. It says, 
Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Paint the thin lines down the center of the wide stripes with country red. I'm just going to, actually I'll hit it with my heat gun. Still a little wet. There we go. And it's a little light, like, up here, but I think it'll be fine because I'm going to shade. Isn't that cool, though, that you get, like, a, I don't know. And then I'm going to take my liner liner, like my little, this is a 10 slash 0, and some of that red paint that I just used for the ribbon. But it's a much thinner liner brush. And see, on the, paint, on the drawing, there's a line down the middle. So, again, I'm just eyeballing and gently on the tip of the brush just pull a line down the center as long as the paint is wet it'll flow off the bristle so make sure before you you know because then if if I run a q-tip across this there's a greater risk that I'll just pick up the this floated um, this line because it's so much thinner so just gently and you can hold your hand in any position I am a little shaky from two cups of coffee, and that's crooked, but guess what? It is a cookie. Oh, and today, I'm trying not to eat any cookies, candy, cake, pie, <laughs> Danish, anything. I, I have been so bad. I gained seven pounds this last year, and I kept my, I, I lost 25 pounds two years ago, Two years ago, I keep going. Well, look at my nails. They're very New Year's-y. Um, and I've kept it off, but then this year, and it really, I think it was like from the end of the year, I put on seven pounds. So I am going to take that off, I'm pretty sure. All right. So, and then I think the stitching lines are done as well. Oh, wait. Let's, we got a shade. So let me get back to this. Um... Shade the straps under the waistband, under the arms and sleeves, and under the hand with avocado. Deepen the shading with a mix of avocado and black green. So I'm going to take my 3 8 inch angle brush, and just with avocado, I should just do it with um, black green too, because I like dark shading. But she, she's going to have us darken it in a minute. And I'm going to go under the hand and right across the um, waistband of the apron here and then we're going to separate out I'll show you this is so cool when you start to separate things like right here because this strap well I'll shade it here up against here and up against here because if it goes down, it would be dark there. And then up against the hand here. You know, because it's behind it. Anything that's behind anything, you put a shade. So this is behind that arm. And then to make the strap come over, see how the strap comes on top? We'll make it like this and we'll put a button there. I have a tracing line that was out of whack. It's fine. And then I have to put some here because it goes under. And let's see if there's any, um, I have to go this, I shouldn't have stopped there. I should have went all the way around. So I just, I just did this little spot right here where the hand was on the waistband but it should go all the way down here because it's behind the arm and I think that oops she has it on this side too I'm just looking at the picture as a reference and then I need one more spot right here I'm gonna fix it Let's see what I based that with. I don't like the, um, let's see. Base the apron with foliage green. I'm sorry, so this is how I would fix, and I think that's Lighthouser, because I don't have foliage green. I substituted Lighthouser 
So what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of that, and I'm going to fix. So let's go in close, and I'll show you what I mean. See how this is just not really straight and lined up? I could either use, I could just, you know what, I think I will. I'm just going to use my, I'm going to base coat it back in. And it'll, I was just going to float it, but I'm going to take, oopsie, got to be careful. But I want it to be, oops, and I had a total blob of water on my finger. But that looks much straighter, and I, I hope I was in the shot, but I may not have been. And it kind of went down on the, um, the shading down here. But that looks better. Oops, I'm, am I in the shot? So I think there's stitching lines. Let's see. Um, shade the straps under the waistband, blah, 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 and then it says deepen with a little bit of black green. Paint the stitching with buttermilk and dot the button with lamp black. Um, so let's see. Do I want to deepen the shading? You know, let, let me just show you what it looks like if you deepen the shading. So we've already done it with just straight avocado. Now I'm going to come back and I have avocado and black green. So it's a brush mix, but I'm putting it down here. So now I can see the difference in color. Now let's see what this looks like. I'm going to put it all the same places I just put it. I don't know why, but because I feel like if I could have just went in originally with that, because I'm impatient, it would have saved me, you know, the double work or the double but there must be something to it. And like I now you can see I didn't do everywhere. And that is popping. It's much, much darker. Kind of want to pull it down. It's looking a little liney. I like it. I don't think I need to do much more. Let's do um, the stitch lines in my very, very light buttermilk. Oop, I need more out. That's what I think if I do um, painting videos in the future, if I have all my colors out um, and I'm not shaking bottles and um, pouring paint all the time. It's just that it's so dry because it's winter and the heat's on and all that stuff. It, the paint dries up on your palette. So, But it would be good to... Um, Kiwi, what's the matter? So there's little stitch tiny and see I did the stitching lines on her shirt with red and they're kind of big. I'm going to try and do them a little smaller because they go um, on top and bottom. It's nice. And it goes down these little, I hope I'm in the shot. But all these little detail lines really are, are what make me so happy. Because it really brings it to life. And it it's a very um, quiet process as well. Like, I don't know, it just feels so meditative to do it. All of it really is, but the details or floating especially. Oop, that one got a little big. But look how cute. So there's nothing else on the bottom of the... I think it's done. I'm going to go back to the um, the ribbon. So let's see, on the spoon it says uh, highlight the ribbon with a thin line of neon's fiery red. I have a color called, um, let's see what this is called, neon's fiery red. Okay, because it used to be called hot shots fiery red. And I guess they just changed the, the line from hot shots to neon's. And then I'm using that really thin brush again. And let's look at the picture and see what she did. Hopefully. 
so it's kind of on the tops and just here and there and it's just going to kind of make it dimensional or Listen, it's a Gingy. It's not like the Mona Lisa, like I said. I also want to put a little tints on, I'm just switching brushes, on these berries because it really pops them. And I'm putting a little up here. I want to put a little on the buttons. And that's basically it. And then a white dot. Oh, and I didn't put all the snowflakes. Because I was wondering if I should shade around everything. Originally, I had shaded um, behind all, of, like just around the edges. And it looked so dark when I first did it because it was, um, nothing else was painted. Anywho, look how cute. So, I mean, I just have to dot the snowflakes. And I'm going to do that. Let's see if it says, because um, I think it told me to do that in the beginning. Um, dot the background with random sized dots of titanium white for falling snow. So I'm going to go into my white. And I, if I do it with a stylus, oops, I don't know, that must be old. I'm going to just do random and try not to be too orderly. Like let it be some far away and don't put too many. I'm kind of saying it to myself as I do it because I get very, like that almost looks like enough. You know, you really don't want to overwhelm it. Well, I, I have noticed, oh God, it's so hard to make a decision of even, uh, uh, uh. Or else it starts to look too, like, oh no, I, I'm doing it already. All right, I'm going to stop. But look how cute. This is an ornament. So I think the next video I do is going to be all my ornaments that I've painted. I think I've done this before. Um, just my painted ornaments that are on my tree right now because um, I'm going to be taking down the tree. So uh, let's see, there is a little dot here. I'm just putting on the final, the finishing touches. Um, so I'm going to go through and I'll try to share that with you guys, but that's it. Oh, and there's a black button I didn't do. Or else her overalls wouldn't stay on. So there's a black button right here. Oh, it's kind of big. That's all right. I like it. All right, you guys. That's it. Happy um, New Year. Happy New Year.